now let's talk about the biggest or the most famous the most prominent vpn protocol which is ipsec so ipsec stands for ip security now what exactly is ipsec the first thing to remember about ipsec is that it is not a single protocol in itself okay like ppp or pptp or l2tp it is not a single protocol in itself rather it is a combination of multiple protocols and that is why it is called a framework so it does not provide the exact mechanism for everything that needs to be done rather it borrows the features or it borrows different protocols for different tasks that need to be done so it's a framework of standards that provide security features like confidentiality integrity data authentication and those kind of things another thing to remember with ipsec is that it works at the network layer so any traffic any ip traffic can be protected by ipsec pptp l2tp ppp they were all working at data link layer okay but ipsec works at the network layer okay now let's talk about the two main groupings of standards when it comes to ipsec ike isacamp uh one moment yeah so ike isacamp this is the first grouping of the standard under ipsec and then the second one is ah and esp so let me explain that to you now in the in 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 a manner so that you will be you will be able to understand how exactly or what exactly is the role that these two standards play isacamp and ah and esp okay so let me go back to the drawing board okay so now we are talking about ipsec so the way it works is that you have a router here let's say and then you have another router here and then they are connected over the internet okay and then both these routers have lans behind them so let me give them some network as well so this is 192.168.1.0 slash 24 and this is 192.168.2.0 slash 24. this is one system this is another one and then so this is let's say 1.1 .1, this is 1.2 this is 1.3 and this is 2.1 2.2 and 2.3 and these two ports are connected to the internet so they need to have public ip addresses right so let's say this one is 20.1.1.1 and this one is 30.1.1.1 okay now let's say this system here 192.168.1.1 needs to communicate securely with this system over here 192.168.2.1 so it will it will generate a packet and then that packet will be sent over to the default gateway which will be this router and this router will receive the packet okay now this router will say that hey i'm trying to i need to send a packet from 192.168.1.2 to 192.168.2.1 and my configuration tells me that whenever i have to send some traffic from this host or maybe this network to this network i need to first i need to send it over the vpn tunnel over to this router so this is r1 and this is r2 so it will first try to establish a vpn tunnel with this router over here so it will tell the packet hey the the packet that is trying to go from 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.2.1 it will say hey hold on before i can send you my configuration tells me that i need to first build a vpn tunnel with this router so let me build that vpn tunnel first and i'm talking about the connection that is just getting initiated because it could be possible that this tunnel already is up and running and in, in which case this uh this initiation of the vpn tunnel will not come into picture but let's take it as a brand new scenario okay where the tunnel does not exist so it will tell the packet hey you hold on uh, let me first build the vpn connection and once the vpn tunnel is built then i will send you securely and safely over the internet over the vpn tunnel so what will happen is that it will create two connections okay so it will first of all tell router 2 that hey router 2 i have i need to build a vpn tunnel with you uh, so router 2 says all right let's build a vpn tunnel uh, but before we can actually build the vpn tunnel we will need to communicate some parameters right because they will need to agree upon some parameters like how will they authenticate will they be using some pre-shared key 
or will they be using some digital certificates or will they be using something else they will also need to agree upon the encryption parameters like should they be using uh, des or 3 des or aes or something else they will also need to agree upon the the duration of the vpn tunnel for how long the, the tunnel will remain up should it be for four hours eight hours two days one day after how long the vpn tunnel should automatically tear down and then they will also need to agree upon certain other parameters like should they be using diffie hellman algorithm or rsa or something else right so all of those parameters need to be agreed upon before the tunnel can be established so they agree upon those parameters in something called a phase one so phase one begins and in phase one the in phase one uh, the parameters that are negotiated are for this peer to peer communication so they say that hey we need to build a vpn connection so let's first of all decide what parameters are we going to be using to build vpn connection between ourselves okay and that is called phase 1 okay so once this phase 1 connection is established and once they have authenticated each other over that phase 1 now they know that they have authenticated each other because now so now they are sure that they are communicating with the right routers with the right parties and there is no man in the middle attack happening because nobody is trying to spoof they, they have authenticated each other using pre-shared key or some digital certificates or something else and they have also agreed upon the parameters like using uh like the duration of the tunnel and other such things so once the phase one has been completed which is phase one once the phase one has been completed then they say all right now we have a secure connection between us now let us decide how we are actually going to be transmitting traffic from 192.168.1.1 .1 to 192.168.2.1 because until now whatever they were negotiating they were negotiating for communication between each other they were not negotiating to actually send the user traffic from this host to, to this host but now that they have a secure connection they can say that all right now we have a secure connection between each other we have authenticated each other now let's decide how we are actually going to encrypt and send the user traffic should we be using esp or should we be using AH? AESP is encapsulating security protocol. AH is authentication header. So should we be using ESP as a protocol for, for, for uh, encapsulating or should we be using AH as the protocol? And what traffic needs to be encrypted? Again, should we be using DES or 3DES or something else for, uh, for encrypting the user traffic? Okay. So that happens over phase two. So phase one is about peer-to-peer -peer communication. Okay. So phase one is about peer-to-peer -peer communication. And once that has been decided, that has been established, then phase two connection begins. And phase two is about the actual user traffic. So over phase two, they decide how the user traffic will be secured, how the user traffic will be encrypted, whether it needs to be encrypted or not. Maybe they're using AH, okay, which does not provide encryption capabilities. So that is what happens under phase two. And once they have decided what needs to be done or how exactly the user traffic needs to be secured, then phase two ends. And then they start actually sending the user traffic. So until now, R1 had put the packet on hold, right? R1 had told the packet that, hey, hold on, before I can send you, I need to establish a VPN connection. But now that the VPN connection has been established, which means phase one is over, they have negotiated their own parameters. They have negotiated phase two parameters as well. Now R1 will actually encrypt the traffic from 192.168.1.1 towards 192.162.2 and send it towards this router. So this is exactly how IPsec VPN tunnel is established. Although you don't need to go in such depth for the CISSP exam, but remembering these details or understanding these details will help you remember the concept better. So you will not have to memorize all of these things once you understand uh, how exactly the tunneling works. Okay. So if I were to go back to the, to the mind map here, so like I said, there are two main groupings of standards, IKE, Isaacamp, Schemey or Oakley, and then AH and ESP. So IKE, Isaacamp was used to establish this, this initial connection. Okay, IKE stands for Internet Key Exchange, and Isaacamp stands for Internet Security Association Key Management Protocol. Because just having this connection is not sufficient. Uh, they will also need to recreate the keys from time to time, right? So that even if one key is compromised, then the attackers will need to compromise other keys as well. They will have to keep compromising the keys if the keys keep uh, keep getting recreated after some time, right? So key management is a key part of this of, of this whole negotiation. 
So that is where IKE Isacamp come into picture. And then once that is done, then AH and e, uh, ESP or AH come into picture. So that is why these are the two main groupings of standards. So it says here, these standards are used to set up phase one connection, which includes agreeing on various security parameters that will be used to secure the phase one connection. Uh, for example, whether to use DES or 3DES or AES, uh, or whether to use MD5 or SHA, whether to use pre-shared key or certificates. Once phase one connection is up, then phase two negotiation is done over the secure phase one connection. The phase two negotiation includes items like what traffic should be protected, what protocol should be used to protect the traffic, whether tunnel mode should be used or transport mode. Those are the kind of negotiations that happen using IKE as a camp. And then comes the comes in picture AH and ESP. And these are used to provide protection for user data, not for the peer-to-peer -peer communication, but for actual user data. The difference between AH and ESP is that AH is authentication header. It provides you data integrity. It provides you data authentication. It provides you prevention against replay attack. And ESP, which stands for encapsulating security payload, that also provides you the same services as AH, but it also provides you encryption. Okay, so that is why in just about all of the real life scenarios, you will see ESP being used rather than AH. All right.